So we'll go ahead and call the select board meeting for Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022 to order. Uh, we have John Muskevitz, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, Amy Parsons, and Jane Nevinsmith here. And the meeting's being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. And uh, let me just ask John, John, are we streaming all good to go? All right, thank you, sir. Um, all right, consent agenda 2.1. We have warrants AP2234S, AP2234, PR2218, AP2235, AP2235S. Um, no minutes, but we have Hadley Police Department resignation for Brendan Smith and use of the common and one day liquor license request for asparagus festival, June 4th, 2022. Uh, I just want to pull that one out there because just a little bit of discussion on that, but uh, we'll leave everything else there. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Persons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And uh, so as far as the asparagus festival, um, sounds like everything for the most part has been worked out between Chief Mason and Chief Spank Nable. Uh, for DPW, um, basically the, the issue that uh, we're seeing with DPW is, uh, well, one, we don't have the snow fencing and some of the other barriers that I guess were requested. We just don't have that sort of thing. And uh, at this point, we really can't spare guys for any number of hours or on Friday before the event to help with logistics for the event uh, because it just, and it's not even so much a cost thing as far as reimbursing the labor rate. It's really just losing the, the time to work on work orders and get things done that need to be done. Um, so I'd like to see if, um, if for the asparagus festival, if anything's needed as far as, as barriers or, you know, traffic cones, things like that, that they bring in their own outside traffic vendor to, to handle all that stuff rather than rely on the, the DPW in town to do that. I, I have another question about anybody using the common and that is, I've seen Amherst common on rainy days get really messed up. Do we have any kind of a deposit that pays for our DPW to clean that kind of problem up should it happen? So my understanding is we do, it's $500, but you know, if, uh, that doesn't go very far. Yeah. It's only going to take one vehicle driving on the common to eat up that $500. So, <laughs> um, so if, if we could add something to the agreement that if the, if the common is not cleaned up after a satisfactory uh, in a satisfactory way, or there's damages that they'll fully reimburse the town for the labor and expenses, and Jennifer, maybe that's already in there. I don't know. Um, they do carry an insurance policy and they give us a COI, um, which is a certificate of insurance that covers um, damages. I would have to um, check and see if that covered um, damage to the actual ground itself. But we do request a COI for damage to the property. And it is in the agreement when people um, send us um, their application. So Marie is aware of it. Could, could we, if, if it's wet or anything, could we maybe instead of, um, and I know we have, we let the vendors on there, even if it's damp or whatever, you know, for whatever purposes, but instead of having them have parking there, can we look for alternative parking um, prior to the events, just in case it is wet. And, you know, we had a wet season last year at that time of the year. And um, I think we have, look at that, that maybe they could do alternative parking, either at the high school, the church, um, and have them set up something like that. Could I suggest that Marie, if Marie Wechter from NEPM is here, and she could probably sort of lay it out for y'all and, and answer a lot of the questions it seems that y'all have. Sure. Um, Cause I know that she's, she told me today, she talked to the high school about the parking already. So oh. Marie, do you wanna address that? Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you all for the time. I, I'd like to back up a little bit for the DPW. All we asked for, for support from the DPW in past years was to borrow a few um, 
um, a few um, saw horses so that we could block off the roads. And then besides that, we borrowed about 60 stakes, which we used and put up all, we have all the storm fencing ourselves and we put it up, but we borrowed some of your stakes, but no DPW staff was involved in putting up the fencing or creating the site. They very graciously went out the couple of days before the festival and made sure it was nice and mowed and it looked great, but really we've borrowed saw horses and um, that you've dropped off to us and um, we've borrowed some metal stakes, but we've done all of the fencing and, and, and work ourselves. So if that's, so, so I just wanted to clarify for that, Mr. Phil, um, that we haven't asked for labor from the DPW to put up our fencing um, or create the space. So in the past. Um, yeah. Well, hang on. So they have been out there cleaning up after the event on a couple of occasions in past years, things like that. So I just want to make sure that we're covered. And uh, somehow the, the request came through for snow fencing this year. I'm not sure where that came from. So that's I didn't make that request, David. Okay. That did not come from us from the from the event. Okay. So e either way, what I'm saying is the DPW can't provide uh, support in my opinion. So if you guys need uh, you know, personnel or a cleanup after the fact, then it just needs to be taken care of. Yeah, we've always handled it ourselves in the past. We've never asked for them for help. So, but thank you. We will be, uh, we're advised. Thank I, you. I think the, the saw horses were dropped off mainly for the police department, right, Mike? If they needed them in a certain area or they needed to, to blockade off a certain section of each side of West Street or something while the, pro, while the show was going on, Police department actually used them to barricade the roads. We just right. dropped them off on Friday and picked them up on Monday. I don't see what the problem is with that. Yep, well, I think that right. some things have been articulated that we did that did not come for us. So maybe we can get some clarification after the meeting to make sure there's no mis misunderstanding. That would be um, great. Yeah, happy to. So the next issue that came up was that of the common. Uh, we've done it there for five, we did it five times on the common and uh, we're always going in with the understanding that parking would only be allowed on the common if it wasn't too, if it was water sogged and loggy so we'd ruin the common, it's been understood we couldn't do it. So that's been the, that's been the, the assumption up to date. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we can certainly explore alternative uh, parking and we've already uh, met with, uh, I went, you know, talked to the folks at Hopkins Academy and they've agreed to let us do overflow parking there. So there's one back up there. Um, you know, it's a really good point. If, if we had, if it was so wet, we couldn't put up tents and couldn't do it, then we couldn't do it any there anyway, you know, so it's sort of like a, it's a difficult question about the condition of the, the common. Mm -hmm. It's never been so waterlogged before that we could not proceed. Um, that, and that's always been a concern, you know, that what happens if it's soaking wet and muddy and if you drive on it, you tear it up. So mm -hmm. um, the first two years we did go through a step where we met with the historic, is it the historic commission? Mm -hmm. uh, who is to, to make sure that those guidelines are in place. So we took our marching orders from them in the past. And, um, but I'm certainly happy to take this on and explore alternate parking in case it should happen. I, I think direction usually will come from the select board because we're in charge of town properties and things of that nature. So, you know, I think you're doing well in, in setting it up with um, the school and any other parking and, and following the guidelines that you have followed for the last five years, which has not really been a, been a problem as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, well, we'll... I would like to speak to that Joyce because parking and traffic spent has been a big stressor and a big problem. Um, it's, um, and we've, we learned from the last festival that we'd reached our limits for us internally with the help of the town officials. So in the interim, we've contracted with another vendor who's going to help us manage parking. Um, and they've done it for the Green River Festival. They come highly recommended. And so they will bring their staff and they'll make sure. So for example, that will keep the parking um, much more smooth as we you know, get people in and out of the space. But uh -huh. it'll also address some of the issues and the stresses that have been on the residents on West Street themselves. Uh -huh. um, so, for example, if, uh, are we have fabulous volunteers who will stand there at the end of the road, but they're not particularly trained to deal with, diff, you know, a lot of different situations and it's very chaotic. Uh -huh. So down by the Bay, for example, especially down the Bay Road end, 
So uh-huh. by having professionals there, we'll be able to ensure that the farmers who need to get in and out of the site uh, can get in and out, that the people who live there can get their cars in and out. So there'll be uh-huh. someone there to manage that at the four points of the festival. So I think that's going to take a lot of the stressors off as well for the residents, as well as for the the, the good running of the festival. Okay. And, and, and if you've noticed for this year, um, on the side, Bay Road side, we have set up signs um, near Echelon and there is no parking there. So that needs to be uh, followed even through the festival on the road, West Street. So all the way along West Street or just in front of Echelon? Echelon and the, it, it'll be marked there so that you can okay. see it. There's actually signs that it's a no toes, it's a toe zone. Um, so nobody can park there. So we just want you to follow that. We don't want anybody to get towed and we don't want Eslon to be the culprits because that like it's the safety of taking that corner and being able to see when you come out of West Street. So that's why we did that. So if you can just follow those guidelines also on that side, that would be great. Be happy to. I have a, a question and it has to do with the traffic on Route 9 and pedestrian crossing, which was quite um, difficult in my memory that finally, I think the last time they held it, we had police there, did we, Mike? And and you figured out Uh, a way to not let them cross continuously, but to let traffic move and then people move and then traffic move, good. Yeah, if you've ever been to the Big E, it's kind of like that where you you Uh let people, um, you know, gather in a group and then you get them all across at once. All of that is actually going to be part of the um, mass DOT traffic plan that we have to submit. Uh, uh-huh. Once we get full approval from them, we'll be able to move forward with that part of it as well. Thank you. Okay, I think we've all, Maria, are you all set? Are we all set? I, know, I just want to make sure there, I mean, so for example, you know, if there are any other questions that come up, for example, please, please, please cut, reach out and I'll be checking in with Jennifer regularly. Um, so we'd love to be able to address these things. You know, we, we, we have a great working relationship with, with public safety and, and fire. And I think we carried over our concerns and we're at places we could support this in a better way, uh, from, from 2019. And I'm hoping that the, I did added, um, um, resources and, um, management on the ground will make it a little smoother. Yep. I think the only thing now with uh, the change in the COVID things that we may see, a, you know, an increase at that time of, of traffic, we don't know, but we'll, you know, that's one of the things that might be happening with well, people. That, that would be optimistic, Joyce, that people come out. So that's what we're hoping. So <laughs> this will be, be our first public event that this, that, that, that New England public media has been involved with since uh-huh. COVID. Um, We've been doing everything remotely, but we think that because it's outside, um, uh-huh. this is a, a great a great reentry event uh, for folks, and it's a I I'm, I'm really happy to be seeing it coming back. So well, let's hope for a dry season and more asparagus. There you go. All right, just need a motion to approve the uh, use of the common and one day liquor license for June fourth. So moved. moved. Fine, second. All right, Joyce uh, with the motion, Amy with the second, and any other discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call, please. Uh, Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 3.1 3.1 public comments. Is anybody here? Uh, well, let me read the thing first. Uh, we'll limit this to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. So everyone has a chance to talk. Uh, if you're here for public comments, turn on your camera and wave at us or raise the digital hand. Okay, last call, nothing. All right, we'll keep going. Uh, I'm going to skip down to 5.1 Hadley Community Host Agreement Extension because I believe uh, Andy is here for that. And uh, I am here and Matt is here. Okay. Yeah. Hadley, is your guys doing? Good. Uh, requested an extension of their operating date of March 29th, 2022 to due to delays. Uh, 
Andy or Matt, do you want to just speak about that a little bit and what you're asking for? Yeah, we're just asking for a six month extension. We've been hitting delays left and right due to, you know, shortages. Uh, for instance, today, the fire alarm company was supposed to uh, finish up and they told us after, you know, scheduling for today that the part didn't come in this morning as expected. So we got to reschedule another day. You know, um, it's just little things like that that just keep adding on due to, you know, COVID issues and, you know, supply chain shortages, it seems as well. Um, but we are we are on track to uh, wrap everything up, you know, as far as that goes in the next week or so. And um, I, you guys got everything that the state needed, uh, the CCC needed. So we're on waiting for the provisional license hearing. And then after that, we should be uh, all clear to move on to our, our final licensing. So my only question for you is, so this ex this um, pushes out your operating date. Does this push yep. out the expiration date of the host community agreement too? Is that what we're doing tonight? Both of them or just the, your start date? Uh, yeah, I believe that is uh, in the terms that we referenced in that letter. It states that both of them, um, the, uh, the day for us to commence operations and, and pretty much the expiration date for us committing, commencing operate, op operations in the uh, host agreement. Okay. You know, granted, we would like to be open before then. Um, you know, like I said, everything's smooth on our end, but it also seems the CCC is understaffed and, and dealing with some COVID issues. You know, you know, they went from having two hearings a month to only having one, you know. So. Okay. So any, anybody have any questions for them? Or if not, we need a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to let them have their six-month extension. Second. All right, motion by John, second by Amy. Any other discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Right. You're um, let's go down to, um, Carolyn, do you want to knock out the town administrator report real quick? Real quick? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so MassDOT, we did have our pre-construction meeting and Scott and other members of public safety were attended. It was pretty, a, was a lot of people were on that meeting, almost a little too big, but we did narrow it down and, and, the, the, your employees asked really good questions and offered really good information about reminding them of peak times of traffic for their for their planning purposes, as far as you know, move in and move out for UMass and other factors that are that we're so aware of, but Mass DOT may not be aware of. Whether that's considered or not, I'm not sure, but I, I do thank the staff who did attend and shared their input. But it looks like, and, and Scott can correct me, but it looks like. Really what's happening right now is utility issues and clearing and, um, for example, demolishing exotic, the old exotic auto building. Um, so that, but that's going to be happening eminently. I would say by, uh, I think within the next three or four weeks, I know Scott is going to begin his meetings with them as well. Scott, do you have any other updates as far as what you've had discussions with them? Uh, just preliminary stuff at the moment. Uh, next Friday, uh, we're meeting about the trees uh, to, to discuss that. Uh, there's really not a lot, of this, a, lot of that, a lot to discuss because their scope of work and what they're doing, they can take any tree down that they want. But we're just going over the list of trees and uh, showing everyone that. And then I believe... Later in the month, there's a utility meeting about telephone poles and where they're setting them and make sure that everyone's utilities are going to be clear of that. And there's another site meeting we're going to have privately with them. Uh, water and sewer are going to go over our preliminary plans, just make sure everything's in line for that. We haven't set a date on that yet. Uh, we have. Uh, specifications from materials and stuff that 
the contractor gave us for looking over that. Everything looks really good so far. Uh, the contractor, so you know, th throughout the little bit of conversations we have, is it's very good and very open. And they, uh, the exotic auto, it sounds like they're getting ready to move on that pretty quick. So, so far, so good. Yeah, and we and one of the things I did stress is to keep um, our office updated on a regular basis so that I could update the businesses as well as the residents. It's really important to the local businesses that they they know step by step what's going on. So I'll make sure that that happens. Um, no, but I, yep. To that, to the local business, I've had several uh, businesses ask me if we are going to maintain some kind of a current status of construction, like. They're working in this section and next they'll be here and this is going to take three weeks or whatever. Is there any way we could do something? So like that's, that? that's the information I was looking for. So we'll have more discussions. It'll, it, it'll, I will know fair within the next month, what information they're giving me. And if it's not enough, I'll ask for more. So Thank I'll you. make sure that Claudia knows, um, Amy Feige and I have talked about putting out um, and then how yeah. are we going to, how are we going to disseminate that information? Amy and I are talking about that now. We'll probably do it through the chamber, but also use our, our webpage as well and let everybody know. So or, they, or, or, they've or, been in contact with the owners of the property on Route 9 that they're doing. Have they been in constant contact with them about? As far as they have said they have, and I have not heard any complaints uh, for several months that no one's heard from them. Okay. So it sounds like that's all up to date. Okay. You know, I, I, I think I want the police department involved because the updates for the traffic situations that we're going to be running into, they're going to have firsthand information on that stuff. The town hall should be secondary on it. I mean, we need to put it on all the websites and all the social media, but, but the police department really should be the upfront on, on they, they plan on starting three different areas at once, Jane. So there's going to be three separate construction projects going on through that section of Route 9 at one time. It's, it's crazy the way they're going to be doing it. But I really feel sorry for the police department and the safety officers and the flagmen at this point because it, it's going to be real bad. So I, I think what I can do to address that, Jet, we have been talking about how to get all that information out. I will work with Mike to make sure whether they give us two different uh, updates or we have one person and, and, and it gets disseminated. Um, but I will make sure also that as we start to get headed towards the real heavy construction, that that will be a, probably a part of the agenda where I'll, also, I'll be updating you if I hear of any updates. Um, yeah. So it's it's a two or three year project. Yeah. So this and, is going to be on our agenda for a long time. The public's going to have to know all the way through this whole project. Absolutely. That that's Otherwise, that was the main point that I yeah. brought up. Yeah. And yeah. they have opened their office already on Russell Street. So if any of the businesses do need to contact them, I'm sure they can get a hold of the state or where, you know. And, where's that located, John? Uh, it's going to be in. Uh, the tandem tandem area. bagel property there. Okay. The USDA is they they rented space in there in Regish's property. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll keep going. Yeah. That was uh, really just yeah. an update. Jane, can I um, interrupt? Carol, can I get interrupt yep. for a second? Uh, just to answer your question too, Jane. Sounds like their scope of work is starting the exotic auto first, uh, tree removal. And then really the first earthwork is going to be the water main starting in the vicinity of the Legion. And we're going to move up, they're going to move up Route 9 from there. So that's well, we their know, preliminary scope of work. We know that water line needs big help. Yeah, uh, we discussed that with them. That's why they're trying to jump on that right away uh, and just hoping the materials will arrive in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Um, Jennifer has created and advertised the um, IFB for Hockenham fence replacement. So we've got eight back so far and she, she looked at some of them and it looks like we're getting some good responses. So um, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, the trailers, um, we are looking at meeting with Scott and Gary to look at possibly 
uh, remodeling two of the older ones and replacing the break room area with a, with a trailer. Um, as you know, the costs are continuing to increase and we just might, I think we might save some more money if we do do that. It does involve two separate advertising. So it's, we've still got a month or two before uh, we, we know exactly where we're gonna be with that, uh, but I'll keep you updated with that. Um, we're continuing to work on the energy assessment for green com communities. I had a really good opportunity to really be brought up to date on that. Uh, met with Derek Choyak from Eversource Energy, Jack Joukowsky from the Climate Change Committee, Scott and Mark Rabinsky, who is the Western Mass Representative for Green Communities. And um, they just kind of walked us through the next steps. And part of it was an energy audit uh, that Gary and Derek did, but they also needed an inventory of all of our fuel and our uh, vehicles it was a huge endeavor that I thought we were gonna to have to do, but lo and behold, select board member Jane had already done it. So that was great. Thank you, Jane. It, it definitely was, Derek was thrilled about it. So thank you very much. So that's in the, that's, we're con continuing to move on that. And we did discuss uh, solar power purchasing options for municipal buildings. So that is going to play into how we move forward with going out to bid for solar. I think there might be some good options, but we need to really do some more due diligence before we actually pursue it. So um, the H HR manager interviews took place last week via Zoom. There were some good candidates. Um, we're down to four that we're going to interview next week in person over at the library. Hopefully by the 16th, I think it's the 16th. Yeah, I'll have some candidates for you. So we're excited about that. And then I have to show you, um, your budget books are available for pickup. I want to show you the difference. That's last year's. No, well, actually that's 2021 and this is 2023. So you are responsible for reading the whole thing through. Um, <laughs> but they're available for pickup. Thank you for Linda Sanderson. She was um, just so many hours of work into that book. And thank you for Jennifer for being our editor monster this week um, with lots of tabs to fix. So thank you for that. So that's all I have right now. I'm not sure if you have any questions for me. Tax rate's gonna go down just on the paper savings alone from the book. <laughs> I was gonna return. say, does that mean we don't have any money to spend that it's so much smaller? <laughs> um, no, I will not say that. <laughs> Bigger numbers, smaller pages. Um, I will say that you can all have your budget books when you come to sign your warrants, okay? Oh. And, and you need to come some tomorrow. I, I, need to, I need to come in and sign. I'll come in tomorrow, I promise. Yeah, I need as many of y'all. Carolyn needs as many of y'all as she possibly can tomorrow. So you I'll, get a reward of a budget book. I'll be in tomorrow. All right. Um, 5.2, Young Men's Club upcoming events. Um so I'll just read the email that I got from the Young Men's Club. Uh, Johnny Mitch was unable to be here this evening as planned. So the dates for their upcoming events are April 23rd for Spring Fest, June 4th for Country Fest, and October 22nd for Oktoberfest. Um, I'll just read what he says. As we have done these uh, large scale events before, I'll be communicating directly with all the town apartments involved. And I would also like to ask for permission to use the Lower Bay Road Reservoir Saturday, May 7th, 2022 for our annual free kids fishing derby as we've done over the last several years. That's a conflict with town meeting, May 7th. Uh, fishing derby? Yeah. yeah. Well, it has nothing Jennifer? to do. May 5th. May 5th. Sorry, that we're was a five. We're going to Thursday back. Okay. Yes. All right. Perfect. Good. And I'll be able to take the kids fishing too. <laughs> there you go. You don't need a motion on anything. I, I think just for approval of the reservoir, right? I'll make them for approval for the Young Men's Club to use the lower reservoir for their fishing derby May 7th. Reservoir and second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Um, any other discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. 
And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. And uh, Chief Mason and uh, uh, Deputy Chief Bryant, I see you're both here. Do you guys want to chime in on any of those events or everything's been worked out at this point? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, the, the last one they had uh, wasn't really, it, it really kind of worked out well the way that they had it handled. Um, all I would request is that we do the same thing that we've done in the past, that they, uh, you know, communicate with us uh, well ahead of time to make sure that uh, they have a plan set up, make sure they have enough security on site to deal with all the operational issues that go on. Um, and, you know, just have some detail officers there to deal with any law enforcement issues and, and their security folks are making sure that we keep the, uh, keep the participants on site as opposed to anywhere else. And like I said, last time, you know, a couple minor issues, but nothing major. It's, uh, it's worked out okay. So as long as they follow that same, uh, same plan, we're good. You know, he, he's uh, pretty good about reaching out to us about it. We just need to know that there's a plan in place and we'll be there to support it. I think the only thing, uh, Deputy Bryant, is uh, we had an issue with um, them asking about propane uh, inspection in a timely manner. Was that that was correct from the last time they did it, right? Yeah, so in October, this past October, they actually were on time with the propane and we went out and inspected it. It was mm -hmm. the previous times before that that they called the day of for inspection instead of scheduling it and stuff like that, but um, in pulling permits, but he was good last time in October with it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks guys. Um, 6.1 health inspector, Carolyn, I'll let you talk about this. Okay. So a little history uh, as the, select board members have changed and people have retired and left or whatever. We have new ones coming on. Historically, your health inspections were being done by board members and that's no longer the case. Uh, these board members have their own, um, uh, either they're either working or they're just not qualified to do a health inspection. You really need a qualified person. So we had, we were contracting out with Western Mass Food Safety for a very small scope of work um, for you have well over we estimated over 150 food establishments in town. So we function like a West Springfield, but we're functioning without a health inspector. And so that contract was over December 31st. And after getting a lot of communications with the Board of Health and um, Peter and I working together to kind of brainstorm, how can we address this? The, the, the best option um, that, the, that the Board of Health has requested, and I, I do recommend this, um, is that we high, hire a temporary, not, I'm sorry, not hire, you use an independent consultant, go into an agreement with a health inspector who is a trained health inspector, educated, has all the certifications to work temporarily until June 30th of this year. And the reason I'm saying temporarily is um, we, the Board of Health has requested a health inspector be placed in their budget for FY23. Um, so that still needs to go through the process of approval. This is just temporary to get us through until we know for sure what the finance committee and the, and the voters will approve of. There is no change in the uh, Board of Health uh, budget, but it, what I'm recommending is that um, we go into an agreement with Alex Ranacardi, uh, who is a full-time health inspector in the town of East Long Meadow, um, she is willing to work 10 hours a week, which we've never had really, um, except when you had your volunteers doing it, um, 10 hours a week to do health inspections. And it's extremely important. There's uh, what we didn't have as follow-up. We had a scope of work that was just an annual inspection, but when there were issues, there was no one to do follow-up with this last contract. So this is, um, Alex has agreed to do it temporarily. She knows it's till June 30th. Um, it's, she's willing to do 10, um, 10 hours a week for $30 per hour, which is really wonderful. The advantage of, of Alex is she was raised here and knows the community really well. Um, and she's also here, she's also the tobacco officer for this area working for a regional agency. So she's here um, and she's uh, willing to help. She, she loves Hadley. And I think this would be very, very beneficial for beneficial for the town and those that are using all of those food establishments. It's going to include other things 
administrative things, reporting. Um, she's even willing to help us set up some, some more routine data collection uh, modules and things like that. So what I would like to ask the select board is to authorize me to go into an agreement with um, Alex to provide temporary health inspection services at a rate of $30 per hour, 10 hours weekly, effective immediately until June 30th, 2022. $30 per hour, not three. Did I say three? Yeah. <laughs> 30. And what's her last name again, please? Well, her maiden name is Shipman and it's um, Alex Ronacarvey. Rana, Rana Carvey. Rana, I was saying it right until you said it, Joyce. <laughs> Rana Cardi. Okay. I won't say it. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Any discussion on the health inspector? No. Jen, the roll call? Roll call Phil? Yes. Kevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, 6.2, remote meeting recording. What's, uh, what's the story here, Carolyn? I'm gonna pass that over to Jane. Oh, Jane. Okay, right. Jennifer, can I skip, share my screen, please? Disabled participant sh screen sharing, okay. So how do I make it work? I'm getting a message that said host disabled. I got it, try it again. I forgot I locked us down when we were having all that super good times with all the visitors. There we go. Okay. So on the screen is a list of the town committees and boards. And I, okay, I've done this with help from others, but there may be mistakes on it. So at the top, we have the elected committees. The ones that are in red are the ones that have traditionally been videotaped by Hadley Media. Um, and some of those are, are appointed committees and some of them are elected committees. Um, some of the committees are doing their own recording now by YouTube when they have a Zoom meeting. Um, others like Capital Planning and Municipal Building Committee have not been recorded since 2019. Obviously that was a COVID issue, I assume, but there's no consistency here. And I think that as a select board, we should try and have a uniform requirement of our boards and committees. Um, and I don't know how to do that, especially when we go back to open meetings uh, recording will not be easy. YouTube will not be easy, but I think we need to, to talk about what it is that we really expect. Now that we have moved because of COVID into a video friendly user space, I just thought we ought to bring it up. Yeah. Um, John, are you still here? Harrison? You might have stepped away. I mean, I don't think John Harrison has the time to record everything. No, but I, I, do just, know. I was just curious what the options are. To, you know, is there a setup where we can just hit record for, for each of these committees and then he, he, later he can upload them somehow? Jennifer? Can I? Okay. So what we do right now is for Zoom meetings, um, you're saying YouTube, but I don't think it's actually YouTube. What it is, is that every Zoom meeting that the town schedules, we record I record in the cloud whether Hadley Media is there or not. And then the next day, I email those uh, links to John Harrison. He uploads them to the town's YouTube channel. Um, so what we could do is, and John and I have been working on this, uh, the town purchased some uh, lovely device called an OWL, which is a recording device that will record a meeting and allow you to do a hybrid meeting, so in-person and, and remote but it will record the entire meeting. We are going to have to have um, some user training because 
John does not have enough hours in the day to record all of these meetings, but um, he and I have a solution and we are going to meet, um, not tomorrow, Friday um, to go over them. But we're thinking as long as the boards and committees meet at the library or the COA dining room and someone on the board has been trained to hit the record button using the owl, we can record all boards and committee meetings. But we're going to have to limit where they meet so that we can limit, so we can have access to the equipment that we need. But we do think that we can record the meetings. I personally, I think all the elected officials or elected boards to start with should be uh, recording. And I know there's somebody appointed or like CONCOM and some of the others that are already doing it voluntarily, which is great. But I think all the elected boards should be a good place to start with. And then eventually I think we need to get them all online because this idea that people can go back and read through, you know, kind of brief minutes doesn't give people a good idea of what's going on. And yeah, you know, we've, we've had three TV channels for a number of years now, and one is still blank, you know, and, and a lot of these meetings can be recorded on that other channel. You know, there, uh, I know it's a lot to get set up and get started, but if you, you know, starts going into these things a little bit at a time, one of those channels could be all meetings, you know, if somebody's really interested and wants to look back and see what see what kind of trouble we're getting ourselves into this week, you know, uh, that it should be available for them. All right, so what, what do we want to do to start with? I don't, I don't have any, you know, long, I, I think we need to make a long-term determination about what we want to do as a select board for the town or what we think the town would be best served by in terms of these meetings. And I know that come July, we're gonna go back to in-person. It's not gonna be remote, whether it's hybrid, I don't know. Is that gonna be a possibility, Carolyn? So there's so much input from really every or every municipality to the governor and the lieutenant governor that this has been very beneficial for get to get public input. Um, but we just don't have a definite. My suspicion is it's going there's going to be options, but it still may include the majority of boards got to show up in person. The, the, the quorum, um, if you remember before COVID. Um, the chair always had to be present. And so it was a little bit restrictive. So I think this, um, I, I think I'm positive. There's just so much input. It's just, we would really start to have to enforce and really train the board members um, about, you got to stay visible. You've got, there's going to be certain things that you have to do. So um, I, 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 I'm hopeful. It really has increased engagement. Well, and I know it's easier, like for planning board, they're very happy with their lawyers being able to present other cases or other plans, and it's on the screen so everybody can see it, and it's not something that, uh, you know, only the planning board sees. The audience has no idea of what's being talked about. So having it projected onto a long-term thing where everyone can understand that makes sense. David, if it's okay with you, I do see Attorney Blank, Blake um, here waiting for us uh, for our next agenda on the executive session. He, he may be hearing, having some input. I don't know. I might've caught him off guard too, so. <laughs> but I, I, have, I have a question about not all of these committees need to um, be on YouTube because they, they are, reporting back to us as, as a select board. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, their notes and their minutes need to be logged in. They need to be whatever they need to do, but I don't know if they actually need to have, um, be on channel five or whatever we want to call it, a Hadley five. Um, you know, I, I, and I think it's up to us to make that determination. I think the ones that we have Aaron read on Jane's uh, profile, certainly is um, the ones that we certainly want to have out there in the public and for people to watch the planning board, the conservation commission, the school committee, our board, 
um, you know, other people that are doing other types of work for the town, not exactly sure if they need to be broadcasted all the time. Um, sometimes it's hard to get work done when that's happening, but uh, it, they're a reporting committee to the select board or to the senior center or to the library um, who reports back to us. So I think we need to take that into consideration and, and instead of trying to videotape all of these um, committees. Well, one of my concerns is not just the five select board members knowing what goes on because yes, theoretically they do, but this is transparency for the whole town to know how the town operates. And so if they're, if they're not sitting on the select board, they may never hear a report from one of these committees. Yeah, but, I, they, but, they, but, the, the, but the select board meetings are reportable and are videotaped, um, whether we are in person or we are Zooming. So those committees that report to us are accountable to us and do report to us. And it is videotaped and accessible to the other people that live in town. Well, that's okay, why but I shouldn't be I, elected uh, starting with because the elected committees don't report to us. So that we theoretically can't, you know, we don't really call them in to say, you know, the library trustees, tell us what you're doing, tell us what's going on, where right. people might want to know about what kind of uh, programming they're, they're implementing or what changes they're having. So, uh -huh. I mean, it, it's a starting place, but yeah, we can go from there. I mean, whatever. I, mean, I think it's an ongoing discussion. Yeah. Cool. I agree. But maybe we start with the elected committees need to yeah. be recorded. Yeah, I, I agree with David on that. We we'll start with the elected committees first, and then we can, if 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 need be, we can move on from there. But at least the people that are elected, you you know who they are and what they're doing and the decisions they're making. You know. Yeah, we. We don't have Hadley Park and Rec, and they're they're elected. Um, their meetings should be, you know, um, taped and brought to the public. Absolutely. Hey Jeff, uh, make you earn your money here. So uh, if you know these elected boards and committees, or, or elected committees, I guess, um, do we have the authority to make them record their meetings? Is that something that the select board can do or, or how does, you know, can they choose not to? Well, I think you could do a town policy that would have everybody, and you could do it with the unelected boards as well, but I, I think you'd do a town policy that required it. I mean, it's, frankly, it's, it's good government. Okay. So I'm the, um park and rec liaison and I have sat in on their meetings before and they have actually recorded them on their phones so I are they zoomed Amy they're zoomed um this the one that I went to wasn't but they recorded it on their phone you know via you know whatever the iPhone has for recording capabilities mm -hmm. and did that get downloaded where anybody in the town could look at it I couldn't tell you that, but I, mean, I, I think that's that's the question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what about these committees that used to always record, like capital planning and municipal building, that haven't done anything since 2019? So I know capital planning um, or the capital committee. Yeah, we, we record. There was a video camera in the room that, that I you know, made sure it was on and then shut off after the meeting. So I'm not sure where the recording went, but for as far as for this last town meeting, it was recorded. I'm not sure if it ever made it to the YouTube channel, but. All right, so for further discussion, we will look into all of this. I, I do think Jeff had some input. He was gonna answer. Did you, Jeff, are you gonna say, add something? Just, just very briefly, if, if, if you have an official recording from the town and it's not, Oftentimes, the, the uh, person taking the meeting minutes will have a recorder. They will use that to do their meeting minutes and then destroy the tape. But if you have somebody uh, officially recording the meeting, um, that should, unless, it, unless it's being used and then, uh, and then being uh, destroyed, that should become an official town document. Now, if you have somebody who's just a you know, uh, Jane Q citizen, um, that's not a public record. 
but um, I would just I would just be careful um, and let the people know that if a if a board is officially recording their meetings, they should download it to somewhere in the town so that that can be kept, unless it's merely for uh, uh, keeping the minutes. Okay, thank you, Jane. Do you want to uh, since you're working on it, kind of work on a policy uh, as far as the recordings go? Um, where would that be, and where would that policy appear? Uh, well, I think you need to make one. <laughs> All part. right. So I make a policy. Then does it become a bylaw? Does it go in the employee handbook? Does it come a as a dictum that, from the select board? A lot of that stuff might be in TV5 when there was a committee there. They went through a lot of that stuff. So John should have a lot of that information there in their handbook, I would imagine. Jane, I can okay. work with you. I can work work with you on that, so we would have something okay. to present at the next next meeting or the meeting. Okay, after. great, good, thank you. Yep. I also think this points out why it's important that the liaisons to all of these committees report to the select board instead of, you know, just occasionally like I'm going to say, okay, April twenty third, climate change is going to have this climate awareness day, but we need to hear what's going on in all the committees. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll bring back something for our, uh, a policy about the recording, maybe for next meeting. And Can we make that two meetings? I'll be out of the country. Absolutely. That would be better for me. Okay. <laughs> so we're not meeting when? No, we're, we're meeting. We're just not bringing we're the policy back. Oh, for God's sakes. I can't go for corned beef and cabbage on the, on the 16th. After the meeting. <laughs> We'll see what's on the agenda. <laughs> it's 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 long. It's getting long. So. Oh, how long? <laughs> All right, you know me. I, I can be in cabbage at home better, probably. But anyway, okay. All right. So last thing we have is executive session. But before we do that, any announcements before we uh, head into that? I do have one, and uh, I did attend Joe Fitzgibbon's uh, wake this afternoon. Uh, only because he's a good man. He was a good man. Uh, Joe was a veteran. He came to town after serving and doing what he needed to do. And he married a local girl, um, Mary Devine, and uh, raised seven children. And uh, he became very active in our town government, even though he wasn't a local person. He was a coach for Little League. He did Boy Scouts. He was on the CPA, the conservation, the housing authority, and he and I worked on two different ambulance committees. So one when I was on the school board and another time when we were uh, when I was on the select board. So uh, he jumped right into local politics and um, really served Hadley well. And he, he just was a good guy. He loved deep sea fishing. Um, Anyway, our condolences to his family and friends because uh, Joe will be missed. He was just a good guy. Anybody else? Um, just that um, I heard from, um, oh, good, um, um, name drop. Anyway, Memorial Day Parade will be Sunday and Denise Barstow is going to be taking over the um, logistics. Okay, I'm sure she will be working with uh, Mr. Bukowski, who is the post commander too at this point um, for the Legion. Jean Baxter's working hand in hand with her so she understands how it happens. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, um, that it for announcements? All right, so we have executive session, and just to confirm, uh, Carolyn, we are not coming back into open session. This says we will, but we don't need to go back into open session, right? Mm -mm. Okay. So the select board will enter into executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss litigation regarding the matter of Hieronymus Peter versus Town of Hadley, where discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the town's litigation position, and the chair so declares. And uh, let's see. Uh, so I just need a, a motion to go into executive session, not to reconvene an open session. So, so move. Fine, second. 
All right, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. <laughs> you, can always, you can always reverse it. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> As chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley and we will not reconvene in open session. Uh, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Miscavitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody.